But, saggy, <laughs> blemished, ugly, small, gross, hairy, wrinkly, blubber butt. These are words I spoke to and about my body for years. Yet there was a time that they never, ever crossed my mind. Today they don't, not because they're not relevant or true, but because I just don't dwell on them. We're women, and many, if not all of us, have a problem area. If it's not our thighs, it's our upper arms, our bellies, our butts, the list goes on. Most of us, if we're honest, have a body part that bedevils us. I'd like to share with you my journey, my relationship with this body, my body, the body I have today. But first, a little bit about myself. I'm a 45-year-old mother of two adult kids, one of whom is here in the audience somewhere. <laughs> I have a passion for fitness, a huge passion for fitness, embracing midlife and living life to its fullest. A few months ago, Valentine very kindly reached out to me as a result of having seen and followed hashtag my 365 challenge on Instagram, which kicked off on the 1st of um, January this year. My intention was, and remains, to push my body as hard as possible. Um, you know, so doing stuff like um, spinning, running, high-intensity interval training, camp, even skydiving, on the days that I feel um, strong and energetic. But on those that I feel just too worn down, when I cannot fathom going on a run or lifting a weight, then to actively rest my body by doing lighter, you know, less strenuous activities such as yoga, pilates, golf, even just dancing or going for a walk. Anything, as long as I'm active, for a minimum of 30 minutes um, each day. So this was the challenge that I gave myself at the start of the year and a commitment that I made to myself. The intention, um, the, my, my intention of basically um, sharing my fitness journey on Instagram, and actually largely thanks to one dear, but that's another story. <laughs> but first and foremost, it was to make myself accountable. And secondary to that, to hopefully inspire and motivate others, mainly women in my age group, um, and to kill the, you know, I don't have time to exercise notion, which I often hear. And lastly, to illustrate the correlation between being active and feeling great. So, back to my journey. Up until the age of 16, I took it for granted that I was fit. My parents felt very strongly that each of us engaged in some sport. They were really encouraging and they put in a lot of time and money into our training. I swam competitively at a high level and outside the structured training programs, we ran three to five kilometers as a family at least three times a week. So needless to say, weight was never really an issue for me. And despite the fact that I ate like a horse, I remained in pretty good shape. So enter shock number one. Upon leaving Kenya and going to boarding school in England and being really unhappy and unsettled, I comfort eating. My new best friend and constant companion was Sarah Lee Chocolate Gatto. Hmm? <laughs> I hated everything about my school, hated England, felt alone, and refused to participate in any kind of sport, including swimming. And so as a re result, I obviously began to put on weight. I remember once or twice feeling like I was lost or stuck in somebody else's body. I hated what I saw. And so I chose to literally avoid looking at myself. I had come home on Christmas holiday and was one day getting really excited getting ready for some friends who were coming over for a barbecue. This was the last weekend before going back to school and the week before my 16th birthday. 
I remember squeezing myself into one of my hottest pair of stonewashed jeans. Yeah, remember those? <laughs> the stretch ones, no less. And then feeling really chuffed that I had managed, and yes, with a bit of effort, to zip and button them. And then happily running down the stairs, past the living room where my dad was sitting, when he called me back. Uh, Wangui, that's what he calls me, please come. So I sort of skipped to, you know, to him, and I was like, yes, Dad, what's up? I really think you should go and change. <laughs> Confused, I asked, why? Because you're fat. His answer hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm an only girl, and my dad's opinion of me has always been really, really important. I'd never, ever heard him, you know, especially so bluntly, not approve of or... Um, compliment me on the way I looked. That comment shook me so hard that when I went back to school, I engaged in all sorts of exercise. Not only did I go back to my swimming, but I took, uh, I took up uh, squash, tennis, and did Jane Fonda aerobics in my free time. Yeah. <laughs> in a matter of months, I was ecstatic to have lost the weight, um, really toned up, and got to a point where I honestly looked and felt fly. Massive confidence boost. As I finished high school, went to uni, dated, and eventually met and married my ex-husband. <laughs> Enter <laughs> shock number two. <laughs> Enter shock number two. So after, you know, cruising through pregnancy and childbirth, without having put on any unhealthy weight. Just the realization that I had taken my pre-pregnancy body for granted. I had gone from an initial weight of 55 kilos to 65 and a half at full term. I remember so many comments from a number of people who were so shocked to hear that I had given birth. Why? Because I didn't look anything like nine months pregnant. They had sort of placed me at around five months. So obviously this was a huge boost for my ego and amplified by my doctor who had often told me that the reason my baby bump wasn't very big was because of how tight and firm my abs were. <laughs> so, with that mindset, I thought I was off the hook because if I could have gotten through pregnant, if I went through pregnancy and childbirth, without any um, bloating or, you know, drastic body changes, despite that colloquial eating for two, then I was pretty much good to go. So you can imagine, I mean, I kind of attributed that also to the fact that I was a young mom. I was 22 at the time. So you can imagine my shock after months of drinking flask after flask of Oshuro. Huh? <laughs> Lots of eating, of course, all in the name of, you know, producing enough breast milk to feed my, my, to breastfeed my child, I exploded into a very hefty 75 kilos. We didn't really realize um, at the time, I think I realized it later that year, that December, when my daughter was seven months old. See, I've never been one to stand on scales, so I had suspected that, yes, I might have put on a little bit of weight, but that was it. So when we made plans to go to the coast for for New Year's, and after months of living in leggings and big baggy shirts, with that holiday looming, I decided to pull out all my little beach numbers, you know, like shorts, bikinis, little summery dresses. Well, shock horror, because everything I tried on, nothing fit. I mean, shorts and bikini bottoms barely went up mid midway up my thigh. Dresses, Forget it. That was without a doubt the most miserable holiday I think I've ever had. There were many of my friends and acquaintances, many of them, let's call them summer bunnies, don't forget how old I was, yeah, who were around the pool, strutting around in their little bikinis, looking amazing. And there I was, perpetually wrapped in kikois and draped in my husband's big t-shirts, and, um, you know, just feeling really miserable. Getting into the pool to cool off was a nightmare. Really humiliating, horribly embarrassing. I remember I would sort of step into the pool holding the kikoi 
and then when sort of need in the water, lift it up a little bit, get in a little bit deeper, quickly rip it off, jump in. I still had the t-shirt on, okay? <laughs> Hold on to the t-shirt, and then when at waist level, quickly fling that off and submerge the rest of my body into the pool. Coming out, equally um, the same, except I remember that I used to have to scan and just make sure that nobody was really looking in my direction before I quickly climbed out and covered up. I loathed my body. I hated the way I felt. It totally eroded my self-confidence and self-esteem. This was, a, was reflected not just in how I dressed, but also how I behaved. So if I ever, for example, walked into a room or into a function, I would honestly sort of just scuttle to a corner, you know, somewhere at the back, and always ensured that somebody sat in front of me, so I was always seated behind somebody, or there had to be some sort of obstruction. Um, I just never wanted to stand out. I believe a large part of how I felt, um, you know, strongly influenced my self-worth, or lack of it, actually, and played a really, really big role in how and what I allowed myself to be treated, uh, how I allowed myself to be treated during my marriage. As painful as it was and is to admit, I really hated myself. So, after that torturous holiday, I once more embarked on trying to lose the weight, and I did. But I yo-yoed up and down and up and down, once more putting on quite a bit of weight after I had my son. As unhappy as I was in that state, somehow I didn't really stress about it too much because I knew I could lose the weight because I already had. By the time I got to my, to my 30s, the real trauma actually came from realizing that despite the weight loss, my body just wasn't what it used to be. I mean, floppy boobs, for example. And I became totally obsessed with trying to get it back. A, major, a really significant shift happened around that time, and it led to a major turning point. Whilst in, you know, getting dressed in the gym changing room one day, I caught a glimpse of a mirror reflection of my naked butt. Whoa, I mean, my reaction was really like, whoa, because we're cellulite city. <laughs> but not that orange peel-like type of cellulite. These were deep holes I remember referring to as craters that I remember poking my fingers into. My reaction was total shock, disgust, disbelief, but also a tiny bit of humor. I honestly could not believe it. And the subsequent relationship that I had with my body was one of shame, dislike, constant criticism. Until one day it dawned on me, as the saying goes, that I really wasn't comfortable in my own skin. And that made me really, really sad. So the work. Determined to turn this around <clears throat> involved me looking at myself naked in the mirror every day from head to toe and back again, slowly and deliberately, and learning to love and embrace every inch of me that I saw an extremely difficult exercise at first. I decided to look inward too, because I realized in a very uncanny way how I felt about how I looked on the outside was deeply interlinked with all the chaos going on within me, both emotionally and physically as well. I began meditation and to appreciate, the, and, a, a, to appreciate and reflect on the countless ways my inner body thrives and makes me live. I began to fall in love with myself. Where am I now? In awe and in love. Mm -hmm. Because my body is the most amazing thing I will ever own. It is in the real sense of the word, awesome. And it knows exactly what it is doing. My heart beats, my blood flows, my nerves transmit thousands of messages throughout my body without me even knowing. I have a profound respect for it. It is incredibly strong. It has carried me from my first breath and will keep carrying me to my last. 
Despite all the constant criticism that, the criticism that I put it through and the countless ways I wanted to change or manipulate it to take shapes that it would not take, despite all the negative stress that I put it through, believing that I knew best, it always forgave me and continued to keep everything in check. My body is loyal in the way it takes care of me, and I am and forever will be extremely grateful to it. I'm in awe of it. I thank it. I respect it. I love it. Hmm? <laughs> and I embrace it. I embrace it. Cellulite, wrinkles, lines, gray hair, stretch marks, flat chest, my hookah's hands, and all. Hmm? I look out for it. I care for it. And I celebrate. My body is of infinite value and can never be replaced. I mean, it's the most amazing thing I will ever own. But guess what? As I have fallen in love with my body, I have fallen deeper in love with myself as a whole and deeper in love with my life. So much so, I am living my best life yet. <laughs> Thank you.